Intriguing. We're heading into game one. Intriguing. That explains I overheard a conversation about people debating if Rob was better than Snake. This probably has to do with Charles's pick. So. All right, so <laughs> Bolero versus okay, so Bolero versus Charles, Snake versus Zelda. Now I have no idea how this matchup is gonna go, but from what from what I can tell, I think you can imagine it's a little bit of a projectile war. It's mm -hmm. a, it's really bullet hellish, but hell, I can yeah. imagine it being slightly in Snake's favor as Snake has a little bit of advantages over Zelda. Yeah, Bolero not being shy about using that neutral B and just finding his way in. Very nice utility right there. Good use of the C4 though to catch his landing. Must have forgotten about that. One thing you got to be careful of, though, those grenades hit both players no matter what. So if you reflect it and it stays in place next to you and you don't have your shield up, well, one, it will do more shield pressure on shield. Two, it's just going to do more damage Ooh, to you. Ooh, okay. That was nice. But Valero bringing the damage out with that back air against the stage. He is up on Charlie here. Okay. Nice. So Valero has a nice lead against Snake, a character who's like... A hard to even gain on, not get a lean on sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, played correctly. But it seems that Bolero has proven that he's able to pressure from a distance, but also pressure up close. I think Snake. Bolero has found his zone, and Charles yeah. is really working hard to break that zone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. Ooh, he tried to go for the hard, the hard kill right there. Yeah, luckily lots of end lag, so Charles able to get the punish there. But we got All a right. situation, he's off stage. All right, Phantom. Oh, he, he covered high. Oh he, that would have been bad if had he uh, had he not air dodged there. All right. All right. So uh, the the diagnosis was not incorrect. It looks like Ooh. Bolero. Oh, hype. okay. Bolero survived, and uh, Charles survived too. So, well, Snake is a heavy boy. Okay. All right. Now starting to get a, a grasp as to when he's kind of going for those neutral bees when he can wait it out. But. Yeah. Yeah, as you see, Bolero's like like really not afraid to throw a Phantom, which is one of Zelda's like strongest tools. Mm -hmm. Both players kind of exchanging blows for the oh, last Oh, okay. Here. He was trying to. Uh, well, Charles isn't really like he's not really forced to like recover low because he's oh he's dead now. Oh, that looked looked like it was all on something killer. Bolero all right, one ninety percent. Oh, he's going for the up tilts. There it is. <laughs> There you go. Hey, no mountain is too tall for Snake to climb, as you can see him, you know, literally flying in the air. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the scariest thing about Snake, though, is, like, when you're at Hyper Saiyan, you're like, there's, like, so many options that can kill you. You got, uh, yeah. you got Nikita, you got uh, the Dino. So many fast options that can kill you, too. Yeah, especially up tilt. Like, unreactable, hard-hitting moves. <laughs> now, Bolero's taking a lot of percentage. Do you, I think he's giving up... Uh, uh, the lead, honestly, when he's trying to get, he's not get, really not giving up the lead, but he's kind of like going in when he's not supposed to. He's not playing as slow as he has been for yeah, the, he's kinda the like last three, it. four minutes. You know, he's kind of kicked the pace up a little bit, and that's working to Charles's favor. And also to Charles's credit, catching on to the shenanigans that are happening, figuring out his window of opportunity to punish and whatnot. Definitely taking a lot of trades in the process, though. That's just how Snake plays the game. Okay, down tilt. Miss it. Uh, I'm surprised uh, Bolero hasn't uh, done any down into forward air setups. I really like um, when he's throwing out the constant pressure, you know, when he has the yeah, he just into the side B, conditioning where he's going to go, punishing Now, now the worst thing that could happen is that if uh, Charles throws a projectile, and you know how, like, when you throw a projectile, it extends the hitbox of a move. Like, if it, it all oh, that wow. didn't kill. Wow. wow. Nice. But that, that will. will. I don't think he should have pressed the button there. I think he should have just like safely like gone to center, like to the ground, and then probably reset it from there. Well, hindsight is twenty twenty. So is the year. So y'all don't need glasses. Twenty twenty vision. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> let's see if Charles goes back to the Rob Bolero. Not even looking to, uh, you know, he he looks like he he's taking a few deep breaths before really absorbing that. Yeah, I took game one, but he didn't take the set yet. He's he's in his zone now. He's got a. Got to think really hard about what his next steps are. I think Stay in Snake as well. Wow. I think Blair has good pressure. It's just that uh, near the middle of the game, we saw he kind of like started forcing his way towards the uh, towards Charles, and I think that, like if you could do it correctly, that's fine. But like at that situation, he kind of did like incorrectly. What do you think of the counter pick to Smashville right here against Zelda? Uh, I think more problems, less problems. I think more. Pro I think it's more less space. I could be wrong. I think uh. It's less space. 
and you have more less per less like room to like t uh what's it called throw your grenades and stuff because you have like one platform to even do that like mm. sneaky put your sneak tactics on there but like other than that it's a solid counter pick to smashville i think he could have went uh battlefield i think his battlefield snakes best stage i could be wrong yeah unless it was there yeah oh no he almost died to that oh good try with the c4 and uh, Charles doing a decent job mixing up his recoveries here, but Bolero just doing a good job playing the grounded game, not really letting any of Snake's stuff shake him, kind of staying in his spot. Chasing him down with neutral be very intriguing. Now Choice. the thing about the thing that, the thing about Charles, that, the thing about the Snake and Zelda thing is kind of like you're playing with two characters who rely on like zoning, and then what they're both and then both their weaknesses are the same, right? So when you put two zoning characters against each other, it's about of uh, who can outzone who? And it's really like it's a long, patient game. But of course, Snake has like the better zoning because the only thing that Zelda really has to zone with the two things is Phantom and then uh, Dense Fire. Those right. are the only two things she has to zone. Snake's entire kit is zoned. Oh, the oh, my, almost oh, that almost looked so close that to hitting him. Oh funny. no, he didn't expect that. All right. But uh, I think one thing though about two zoners versus each other is that there's a there's like the one chance that one of them could rush down the other zoner. But like at that same point too, is that like you're kind of going against like how you're supposed to be played. Right. Oh, the whiff on the, the sour spot on the back air. I do like both players throwing in the occasional dash attack because it it's less of that you know distance demon mentality as the community's calling it, <laughs> and uh, more more passive. Ooh, okay, nice. To uh, and another thing I want to mention is that, uh, the, the, as we see, uh, Bolero's not afraid when he's at the ledge because at the ledge, right, he knows that Charles is going to want to throw a projectile, so he just not not love it. Good job avoiding that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, on the pop of the grenade. Very interesting. Okay, forward tilt. Good job spot dodging through. Yeah, and it, oh. yeah, Snake's, Snake's ledge game is so good against characters who, I, like, struggle versus uh, it. Because, like, there's, like, so many, like, situations you can put someone in. Like, they have to guess every single time. Because it feels like with Snake, it's kind of like you're in this consistent, like, it's not even a 50-50 at this point. It's like a twenty, a three-way 25 or something like that. It's like, oh, there's the there's the situation of where he he hits you with the grenade. The situation where he catches you with the uh, smash, and in the situation you just get up to the or grab. Oh, oh no! Up there, right there. Yeah, finally there. punishing the high recovery. It's been yeah. a while since we've seen that. Mm -hmm. Bolero honestly doing a really good job using that neutral B against him throughout this whole oh, set. Nice. Oh, oh, that wow. was fortunate. Yo, show me your moves, bro. That was a good dance. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was definitely uh very, very fortunate. I, and one thing I do, I did not see uh, Charles, and you could correct me if I didn't, I didn't see this, but I haven't seen Charles put the uh, the de the the bomb, the detonation bomb, on the top platform and then detonate it. Yeah, he's been using the C4 more so just. As a like, oh, okay. I'm gonna place it there and then hope you forget about it kind of thing. Or he's using it to explode grenades early. Very interesting, actually. And C4 is already tricky enough to look at sometimes when you're playing through the flow of the game. Yeah. Like, if, like the thing is, like if you're not kept up with the pace of the game, you can forget stuff really easily. Okay. Good job avoiding Missed that up there. That was his life. Our, oh no, he pressed an extra button. He's not dead. Yeah, he is air dodging. He's committing to air dodges. Okay, very armor early on the upbeat. Steve. Now he has to hit. Yep, that's I think curtains. he, yeah. I think there was no reason to really roll there. I think he was afraid of the grab, but at that, at that part, he.